you. Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. I'm wife. And together we're reading the Bible. Starting with Genesis and eventually ending with the book of Revelation. One revelation, not many. We're working through every book of the Bible and offering our atheist two cents. We're asking questions and pointing out all the nonsense. We are not academics nor scholars. Nope. In fact, when it comes to religion, we really don't know anything at all. And what have we learned so far, husband? God is definitely a dick. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. If you're interested in how we reach this startling conclusion, maybe start from episode one. Otherwise, you can jump in anywhere. It's all good. It is all good. So what are we doing today? We're at a live event in Dayton, Ohio. We are. <laughs> Aw, thank you. Thank you. That's right. We're celebrating having reached the halfway point of our endeavor by hosting this episode live from Bricks Ice House in downtown Dayton, Ohio. And it's sponsored by Free Thought Dayton with financial support from our listeners and friends. So thank you all. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. It means the world to us. Husband! Wife! What are we going to talk about? Well, I don't know. You're the one with the fucking paperwork. Why don't you tell me what we're going to talk about? I'll talk about what we're going to talk about. (laughs) So I put together a list of questions that I thought I would ask, and then you could just rip off, because that's what we normally do anyway. So essentially, we're going to be... Talking about why we're doing what we're doing? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. So the first question that I came up with is for me, why did I ask you to read the Bible with me? Well, I mean, I think that... No, why did I ask you? Why, oh, did, why did I... Why did you ask me? Why me? Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to answer for you, but, you know. Well, you can answer for me. Go ahead. Why do you think I asked you? I think it was because we had never read the Bible and there was a bunch of shit going on in the world that, you know, we wanted to find out what the fuck's going on with that thing. Well, that's why I asked you to read it with me, but why I wanted to read it was because um, I'd always wanted to read it just because people are always talking about, it's in the Bible, you really need to read the Bible. Sure. Have you read the Bible? And are you saved? It's in the Bible. If you just read the Bible. Well, and you were a little bit more agnostic leaning when we started this thing. More agnostic than atheist. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you you had a, some questions. You had yeah. some questions. And I was always told that the Bible will answer those questions. So. <laughs> how, how, how's that gone? <laughs> well, we're doing a podcast, so how do you yeah. think it's gone? Um, so, the next question is, why did you husband agree to do this with me, to read the Bible? Honestly, because... Um, I've never read the Bible myself, and um, I felt like if I was going to talk about politics and talk about the state of the world, that based on how important this piece of literature is to what is going on, um, I needed to know what it said. And that's why I agreed to do this, and that's why I'm fully enthusiastically behind us going this route, because it's, I, I feel like it's important to know who we're talking to and what they mean by what they're saying. Yeah, and I think that reading it together kind of goes along with our uh, relationship early on. Um, One of the ways that we really clicked in the beginning is that we discovered we were reading the same book at the same time. Which was? Which was Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. (laughs) I know, I know, I know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me explain. Let me explain. Because we we were reading it because of that. Yes. Because... Our curiosity goes beyond just knowing that something sucks or we want we want to read we wanted to know but why what sucks about it why does one side embrace it versus the other side doesn't and we didn't have informed opinions and so independently we were both reading this book just to understand why do they love it why do they hate it I, and, so. and that's how we use it now. It is a doorstop now. But at the time, we were both the same age, the same place we were in, in our, our life. We were in our early 20s at the time. Mm-hmm. Oh and we were both just curious and wanted to understand both so- both sides. Well, now, I think not more from importantly, a, like, to be fair to both sides. Not that. We just wanted to understand. More importantly, I wanted to be able to argue people. Like, mm-hmm. if somebody was talking about Atlas Shrugged, I wanted to be taught be able to talk about that philosophy from the point of having read and understood what they are talking about. Right. And I wanted to be able to contradict that on 
intellectual on standing, terms. On standing. You yeah. know, like that yeah. that's where I wanted to be at. Like, that's well, why actually we I have read that. And that's the same reason we yes. want to read the Bible. And that's because... why that's why I brought it up, because it's the same concept, um, to use that as an analogy. We're not reading this because we believe in it or because um it's something that speaks to us. We're reading it for the same understanding that we want to know what our arguments against it are better. And we want to also better understand the people that we get into conflict with. And you have to tread a little bit into their waters to be able to do that, unfortunately. There's, there's bugs in my beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, there's bugs in your beer. <laughs> That's Sorry. Nice. Well, it's hot. You probably got a little really, mad. Yeah, no, I think, that's, I think that's what it is. Yeah. It's just a little mad. You just want a little swim. Yeah. All right. So the next question that I had is, so why are we, well, I guess the kind of, we already answered this. Why are we reading the Bible if we're atheists? I think, yeah, we already answered that. We did. Yeah. Because we want to understand Where people are coming from, what mm -hmm. it means, what, how we would interpret it. That's what we're doing. We're interpreting yeah. it. So. Yeah. So the next question is, why did we decide to make a podcast about it, though? I think we decided to make a podcast to initially to hold ourselves accountable. Mm -hmm. um, it was more about showing up every day and doing this thing and making sure that we stuck to it. Yes. Um, because honestly, for the first six months, I don't think we had any more than maybe 15 listeners a day. Well, and I think also that we were kind of hit or miss. We were a little bit hit or miss. Mm -hmm. and, and we've been less hit or miss in the last year to year and a half because we actually have fans holding us accountable. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Conrad. <laughs> no, it's true. Um, when somebody expects well, expectations. Yeah, um, no, it, it means a lot. I mean, like that to us, it means a lot. And it keeps us going because we get a lot of really great feedback. So, I mean, I, I'm gonna take this moment to say thank you to all of our fans who have supported us and continue to support us. And even if you've just reached out to us to let us know how much our podcast means to you, it, it really drives us and keeps us moving forward. So it does. Thank you immensely. From the bottom of our hearts. So my next question is, why did we choose to be anonymous? We get asked that one a lot. So we have a kid who just turned 18. And graduated from high and school. graduated from high school. We grew up, or we, we just recently moved out of a very, very, very small town um, that was um, very religiously oriented. I mean, there's like, I think seven churches in town. I, I didn't exactly count them, but that sounds about right. Throw a rock and you'll hit a church. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's... And for a minute, we lived across the street from a church. For more than a minute. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and even... Just this area in our state that we live in is very... Red. Red, yes. And um, I feel like if we had put our names out there, would have put a target not just on us, but on our kid. And I don't think that that was a fair thing to do at the time. Yeah. So that's why we avoided putting our names out there initially. Um, we have since, obviously we're doing a live event, so people here know our names. And we have um, opened up to our, to our fans on Patreon to let them know our names. Um, and we even put our picture there. And we even put our picture. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're slowly... We're targets now. We're slowly coming out as to who we are. But, I mean, obviously, though, since we've been doing this for three years, we will always be husband and wife. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but my next question is, so why are we coming out, so to speak, now? Um, because our kid graduated high school. I mean, that, that's and, the simple, and simple version of how that goes. We moved out of that small town, too. That too, but that doesn't really make a huge... I mean, literally, our neighbor has a, a stone statue of Trump. Yeah. A, uh, so. a Buddha. A Buddha. <laughs> yeah, a Buddha. A, a, no, no, no. We're now, really, we moved right to now. East Dayton. What and town are you from? Germantown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, where we moved to, we moved to Belmont. So, like, we're... And, and our neighbor, literally, we look out our kitchen window, and there's a stone Buddha Trump statue sitting yeah. there. So. so we still don't feel completely <laughs> safe, like, putting out flags yeah. or anything, no. <laughs> which, like, I want to put out all kinds of, like, um, pride flags and Black Lives Matter flags and um, just all, all the liberal flags that you want to right. put out that say, this is who we are. This is what we believe. These are the people that we are. We are the woke. Not that you have to be liberal to be an atheist, but it seems to go hand in hand. For, as more far, often it, than not. More often than not, in my experience. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it, it's we've been hampered by where we live, who we live next to, 
who we're trying to protect in our lives and things like that. So yeah, I somebody um, over to the right here mentioned, go ahead, just put the flags out. And I hear you, and like I really want to, but our kid does still live with us. And right now, our kid would probably be all for it. They would, but that's their decision to make in their place, and I don't want to put them in harm's way. Right, right. I just I can't justify that for sure. my own well-being. I don't know. Right. Um, the next question that I have is, oh, we get asked this one a lot, 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 lot. Why are we so crass and disrespectful? <laughs> That's probably more directed at me than him, honestly. No, I mean, I, I, did, I, I definitely open up more on this podcast than I do in, in real life. Yes, you do. So it's been kind of cool the, to see an, you. The, the, and and part of that is the anonymity. Anonymity. Have another drink. <laughs> um, but um, I, I think it is more a bit of, how we feel about the um, situation with um, our, I'm trying to think here, sorry. Um, go okay, ahead, go I, ahead. Go I ahead. was going to say, yeah, I yeah. can tell you, I am crass online and I am crass in person and I am crass in my personal life because I can. And that, <laughs> thank you. Um, I was shushed for a lot of years, and so I'm sure that a large part of it now is just because I, I want to, like, do the whole snap hair wave and be like, because I want to, God damn it. And that's not necessarily healthy either. So I'm still trying to find that middle ground, but a lot of it... Um, I think for me that, that there's... I, I think that I don't want to give... Like specifically with reading the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to give it any more respect than I would give anything else in my life. And and when it comes down to it, I don't feel like it deserves any more respect than what we are giving it. You know, like that. that's... I, I feel like we are giving an appropriate level of respect to it that it deserves in my opinion. Well, that's a lot more like specific. Sure. sure. <laughs> I was being more like general, yeah. but I appreciate your answer there. Right, right. Um, I but think... that's why I'm okay with it. That's why okay, I feel like I it's an saying. okay thing to do because to to treat it with reverence is to admit up front that this thing has standing, that it has a place that is more appropriated to a higher level of thinking than what it actually deserves in my opinion. It is just a Bronze Age book that doesn't really project anything that I agree with. Right. And I, I don't want to agree with it. And I'm happily crass towards that book because okay. of those reasons. So, Well, we've been approached by people who are atheists or yeah. agnostics or free thinkers, some, somebody in that crowd who um, does not understand why we would be... Um, disrespectful anyway yeah. e even though they agree with us in principle they do not like that we are disrespectful sure. to this no religious... and my dad could be included in that group. i wasn't going to say that but yes he can yes he can yeah um and, and they they think that it is a beautiful piece of uh literature that exists um with historical you know things that need to be respected and if the world, if politics, if everything that is going on right now respected it in, as just a beautiful piece of historical literature, I could then agree to treat it that way. But the fact of the matter is, it is not treated that way. It is treated as though this is the law that we have to abide by. And this is the, the reason that we have to take away rights from LGBTQIA. This is the reason that we have to take away rights from people for bodily autonomy. This is the reason why we are changing laws in our country because we can't get over the fact that a God apparently rules our politics. And I do not agree at all with that stance. Tell us how you really feel, husband. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so that actually leads into the next question. Why do we talk so much about particularly American politics? Well, because it's such a prevalent issue right now. I mean, we have the Supreme Court is an Rolling abomination back, right? of, well, it's an abomination. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I can't get behind what's going on there. Um, we have politicians in the Congress and in the Senate that are literal Christian nationalists, nationalists. And we're fighting a harder battle now than I feel like we've ever fought to keep 
secularism in politics and in our lives. I mean, it is we're we're being pushed to the point where we have to yell and scream, "Hey, hey, we're still secular, right? What the fuck is going on?" Like, you know, I mean, it, it's it's not funny. It's not okay. It's and and I, I feel like that's why it enters into our conversation. So because it's just not acceptable. Well, we have some um, foreign listeners who don't always appreciate yes. all of the politics that we get into. And so sometimes we tend to, um, like, we want to appreciate that perspective because it is very local and Americans are renowned for um, being very localized and thinking that their politics are world politics. But we also want to acknowledge we try at the not same to focus time... On American politics, but we do. There, I don't think there's any way around religion bringing them up when we live here in this country where these things are happening. Religion is why my child has fewer rights than I had even ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. Religion is why if my child was in my situation, could not get the abortion that I was allowed to have, 100%. and that's fucked up. Right. So right. how could we not talk about? politics yeah when we talk about religion no i agree and it, it doesn't obviously most of our podcast is based on reading the bible and that's what you get if you just tune in on a very surface level like monday but through friday listen, right but if you listen to us all the time you know we do bring it up quite a bit yeah because it is very important to us it's something we can't ignore and it's right there in front of our faces right now in our country and in this world so they're just so intermingled yeah that you can't untangle them definitely so this next question will bring us down a notch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got real serious there. I know. I well, to, and I knew feel that, like I need to laugh about something. Now. I knew that that would happen. So that's why I arranged these questions the okay, way I did. Right, right. So, okay. To bring it down, um, why is husband so bad at reading out loud? Because <laughs> <laughs> you are. You I cannot. You suck at reading well, out loud. Well, no. Yeah, I cannot. I can't. Okay. When I read to myself, I can read everything but like oftentimes i have to like kind of double cover what i'm reading but i can read really fast and i can i have 100 percent. you know I'm, I'm really good at comprehending what i'm reading no you you are but your skin when is I read, top notch it really fucking is i am like the best goddamn skimmer on the planet it's true it's amazing it's true but reading when it comes to loud, actually reading out loud not your forte i cannot do it and okay. that's why you read that is why i read i suck balls at it <laughs> you really do <laughs> but not to put myself on a pedestal, why can't print? Why can't wife pronounce anything correctly? Well, you have a stuttering problem. I do. I have a stutter. And also, we're reading a Bible that has names that are basically unpronounceable. Some of them. I mean, it's ridiculous. Them. I've seen yeah. them. I'm like, I don't fucking know. I don't. Half I don't the time, know how to pronounce that. Half the time, I trip over them and then I show you, and because you're making fun of me. Well, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't I? I'm sitting there next to you. It's great. <laughs> So I'm like, you try it. And you're like, uh, yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, right, yeah. So that answers that question. Sure, sure. Um, next is, why are we so bad at this? What do you mean, why are we so bad at this? What are we bad at? So um, we argue about this a lot. We actually argued about this all up until uh, we yeah, got here. all day. Um, he did not want me to include this question. No, I didn't. I didn't. He, let me explain. Let me explain. So he thinks that I undersell because I'm always like, oh, we're so bad at this. And we do this in our pajamas in our living room. And, you know, we we riff off of stuff. We don't always come with a script or prepared or planned in what advance. The fuck's a script? Right. Well, you couldn't read it anyway. I threw it away before. So, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so when I say we're bad at this, what I'm saying is the exact reasons that we seem to pick up fans and followers and listeners. We're real. We're, we do things the way we do things. We react the we, way we react. We're off the cuff. We're off the cuff. We, we don't react in a way that is artificial and we don't come up with a, a script ahead of time to tell people like we're not better. We're not trying to be better than what we are. We're just literally reading this as it comes to us and we're reacting and that's what we want to do. That's what we've always done. I think we do that better than anybody. And that's why I was railing against the, the bad. I don't think we're bad. I think we do this differently. I think we sure. do this in a way that is unique and different and fun. That is all. That is all. 
<laughs> well, I just think that it it does bear putting out there, like when we're setting up an event like this, and well, we don't have somebody, producers, we don't have right. you know, we don't have sound guys. I mean, shit, that everybody here that was here tonight saw we don't have sound guys. So I mean, it's it's a thing, you right. know. I guess I just like to temper expectations, and so I just want to understood that we. Um, do have a fun way of doing things and we do like the way we do it and it does seem to hit yeah which is good but just understand what you're getting into <laughs> that's all that's all yes <laughs> and so you get us and the us is is yeah, this this right mm -hmm. that's the best explanation i've got <laughs> so so the next question is why should anyone listen to our podcast i mean i I think that's an individual choice. I think you should read what Bard had to say. <laughs> AI summed us up. Um, yes, they, the, the Google GPT. It did. It, it had an amazing description for our podcast. I, I yeah. you know, ask, go to Bard AI and say, what is sacrilegious discourse? They actually It'll have tell a you. summary. It is, yeah. is actually, I mean, it was a spot on description. It, the only thing, there was a mistake. Okay. They did say that we talk about the New Testament, which we which haven't we actually done yet. Yeah, we haven't got we, there. We will, but we're just not there yet. Right. No, I was impressed. I thought that was pretty cool. I'm like, fuck. Bard knows who we are. Bard knows who we are. Yeah. We're on IMDb. We're What's famous. not to love? We're famous. Right? Yeah. yeah. You can find us on IMDb. You can find us pretty much fucking anywhere. You cannot find us on Wikipedia, and that really chaps my ass. Yeah, if anybody. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Anybody who like wants to put an entry, on, yeah. If anybody's like a wiki expert that. out there, that'd be yeah. great. So. Like I live to find our podcast on Wikipedia. Someday, someday. Yeah, we just gotta. You know, the the motto of our our whole venture here is just keep showing up, right? Keep showing we up. We keep showing up. Eventually, it'll yeah. be there one of these yeah. days. Well, I also keep. We'll saying, celebrate that day. It'll be a thing. I also keep saying that um, I aim low and that I'm the queen of mediocrity. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. There you have it. Okay. So. What do we hope listeners will gain, I think, was the better question there, though. I think, I mean, we talked about this earlier on, but I think that when you listen to our podcast, you're getting a unique perspective. I think you're getting a perspective from some, like you and I, neither of us grew up in religion. We never grew up <coughs> with religion. We never grew up um, learning anything about it, really. Most of our exposure to it has been through um, social encounters and different things like that. So, I mean, it, it is something that we have not learned except for w by going through our podcast and doing the deep dives that we do through this. And I feel like a lot of people that are actually atheists, a lot of them that we have talked to have come up through religion and then become an atheist. Mm -hmm. And so I've heard this multiple times from a lot of our fans that when they listen to us, they are hearing a perspective that they never heard before. Mm -hmm. they, they grew up with a religion that talked about this in a completely different way. And when we say things that we say, because we don't know what the fuck we're talking about, they're like, oh, it could be read like that too? Right. Okay, okay. Right. But there's so many apologists out there that like to make up different reasons as to why this is the case or that's the case. And we're just reading it and responding to what we're reading. Mm -hmm. And it, it's... Pretty damning, in my opinion, based on what we've read. Right. So I think that the unique perspective on how it is read is what they would gain. What do you think they would gain? Um, I tend to agree with you. I will say uh, the majority of the feedback that we receive comes from people who are deconverting. Definitely. And that is something I never expected. Yeah. Um, that was a shock to me. I did not even, it, it never entered my head that that was a niche that needed filling. That I didn't really even know what deconversion was. Until I had we never heard podcast. of that term. So. Yeah. Yeah. But the majority of the feedback that we get are people who, as you were saying, were raised up in religion and had left and never read it in such a way. And so hearing us ask the questions that it doesn't even occur to them to ask and then they thank us for that. Yeah. That has been the most interesting and rewarding. rewarding experience of this whole thing. And that alone is why if you already are a non-believer, you'll hear us talk about that. If you are not, but you're thinking about it, you'll learn that 
you're not the only one and that um, the questions that you didn't know to ask are there to be asked. I actually learned at one point we actually have pastors listening to us to bone up on their own fucking you know, <laughs> knowledge of the Bible. So. It's true. There, I'm like, there's a couple of pastors what, that have reached you gotta out. You got to do you, man. So, yep, you know, yep. whatever. I mean, that's pretty, pretty interesting that we are challenging. Yeah. We are challenging religion. Right. And that was never um, what we intended to do originally. Not that that's a bad thing, not that that's not cool to find out that that's what we're doing, but going into the next Initially question. It was just reading it. Yeah, yeah. The next question I had, which was our final question, what is our ultimate bottom line goal here? I think it's evolved over time. Um, oh. I think that initially we started out just reading the Bible and we wanted to complete reading the Bible. I mean, that's uh, what we still say when we get like really tripped up over um, certain sections like where we're at right now in Psalms. I agree. And we're like, oh, let's just not forget why we're doing this. I agree. I agree. But um, we have also talked about wanting to delve into more nuanced things that are Bible adjacent after we finish this. Mm -hmm. And we've also talked about doing interviews at some point for people that um, could maybe contribute different things to our conversation that we're having about the Bible and religion in general. Mm -hmm. And we've actually had some conversations with people that are pretty, you know, up there that we might be able to reach out to for interviews. And, and I think eventually when we finish this podcast, I think this could be a really great platform to have a, a baseline, you know, piece to reach out to people and say, Hey, can you come onto our show and talk about this? Can you come onto our show and talk about that? And what would you want them to talk about? The Bible. I want them to talk about their experiences, their reasonings, their, like, I mean, one of the people that I, mention a lot is uh, Bart Ehrman mm -hmm. and he is a um, former Christian who has deconverted and he has written some really great books about um, the interpretations of the Bible and how they get interpreted and there's so many different things that we don't get into based on nuanced information that people that have done more studies on this that I would really like to talk to them about such as Bart Ehrman, as, as to how this is interpreted and that's interpreted and why this is right and that's wrong and, and, and different things like that. Like it would just be, I think there's a lot of interesting conversations that could be had that can really kind of nail down a lot of the things that we've been questioning as we've been going through our reading of the Bible. And I'd like to talk to some of the people that might have better answers or more answers than what we've been able to come up with. I did not know that. That is interesting that to learn mine. right here live. Because <laughs> my answer was yeah. our bottom at the end of the day goal is to be able to say that we have read every word of the Bible. I mean, and that is, that is ultimately our goal. Yes. That is what we remind ourselves. But are we going to stop after we've read every no, word? No, absolutely not. I mean, that's not. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Right. So there's, there's more to it. I think we're going to continue even after that, which will still be another few years down the road so considering it's been three years and we're only halfway through yeah uh yeah yeah no it's been a long road but you did receive some fun texts from somebody on on tw i said text but they were tweets from somebody on twitter now x i guess it's called um who challenged you read the quran you pussy yeah, <laughs> yeah. now it's like we're not there yet we're right how can you call me a pussy for not doing a thing that is literally on my list of things to do. Well, because they think that if we rail against the Quran, it's going to be something that they're going to come down on us over and that they're going to seek us out. And I, I don't know. It, it, they're, they're calling us that because there's, I don't know. There, there's a lot of fanaticism in Christianity and in Islam. And that that's, overlaps. None of it's none of it's good, no matter which way you look at it. The, the fanatic, fanaticism. fanaticism in general is what I'm railing at, railing against with the Bible. Now we haven't read the Quran. We don't know Anything? much about it, other than it's another Abrahamic religion. But I think, based on what I do know of it, it sounds just as ridiculous as the Bible. And I have no problem saying that. I just haven't read it. I right. can't speak to that so why would i speak to that right now it's not the one that's currently influencing our supreme court and the laws right. in our country yeah so. if anything the quran in, in, the, in the u.s inspires hate towards islamic people yeah. which i don't agree with that either right so that i right. mean you know it just 
there's a lot of nuanced reasons as to why I will not get into that conversation with people, but it's not a place that I'm at right now. I'm not saying that it never will be, but I just always say it's on our list. We've got a lot of things to go through still with regard to the Bible and Christianity. So we've taken this one step at a time. We only learned through starting this podcast that there is, um, there are different Bibles that have different books in them. And we're like, which one is the one we're supposed to read? And so right. we're trying to figure out well, and what we books went for, we, of th- the Bible that we want to read. And we went with the NIV. We went with the mm-hmm. NIV because it was the most readable. readable. And also, from what we have gathered, it's one of the better interpretations as far as... It's one of the better interpretations from what we have I gathered. I wouldn't say it's necessarily like a cleaner interpretation. I would just say it's a more readable interpretation. Sure, sure. And again, there's so many different interpretations. I couldn't even count them today if we wanted to sit here and count them, but that's the one we chose. So Somebody asked doing. if we plan to read the Dead Sea Scrolls and all that, and I'm like, everything's on the list. I mean, it's yeah. all on the yeah, list. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all something that we might possibly cover. So do um, you have anything else for us today, or was that... Um, that was pretty much it, unless anybody had other questions or comments or jeers or boos or anything Does like that. Does anybody have any questions, comments, anything? You don't have to. I can cut this all out, so it's no big deal. <laughs> you have definitely um, gained the role of king editor on this. How many times do we, like, cough in the middle and then... You're like, oh, yeah. Oh. So, I mean, that, that's so here's a funny thing. So, you, you, nobody listening to our podcast would know this, but when we are going through a podcast, we have hand signals and different things that we use. Like, um, if I've got a cough or she's got to go to the bathroom or something like that or whatever, we're just like, and then, like, we're just like, <laughs> so, like, we, you know, like, okay. And I, I take a note in my phone. I'm like, okay, that was at this time. And then I go back through at the end, and that's how we edit everything out. And so y'all don't get so. to be privy to the bathroom breaks. Yeah, there's a few things we don't and... leave in the podcast when it all comes down to it. So, no questions? So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you said you have a list, you know? Yeah. And I remember you guys had mentioned taking a trip to the Bahamas. We the, have not done that yet. The question so, was: Are yeah. we taking a trip to yeah. the Ark? Yeah. You're down for I mean, that. So I think that will probably be something we will do at some point. I'm, I'm in. Like, I want to do that. I don't know what that trip is going to look like. Well, and, and um, I mean, I've been blocked by him on uh, on Twitter. He doesn't like me. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ken Ham, not a fan of mine. Uh, but I think at some point, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're uh, being blocked by that kind of person, you're definitely doing something. Right. Yeah, so um, I would love to to live stream that almost or do something. Um, I don't know what that would look like though, but I, it is definitely a thing that I want to do. This isn't a question, just a, a, shout, a, a shout out. To yeah, Ken Ham because he was when I deconverted. His debate with Bill and I was my was my precipitating event. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. wow. So, the comment was that um, when um, Ken Ham um, debated. debated Bill Nye, that was our friend's de- say that precipitating, precipitating event. event. Thank yeah. you. Sorry, I couldn't get it to come out too many margaritas. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. Straw that broke the camel's back. That is really interesting to know. Yeah, I I, I don't put a lot of uh, prowess in uh, Ken Ham's ability to uh, converse about his feelings about religion or he's, he's not real good at it. He, he doesn't have a lot of good things to say. But we have a book. <laughs> Are we talking about the Bible or? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, we yeah. have a book. No, I, I love it when they use the book. Like, I, yeah, we can use the book to prove shit all day, but ultimately you're proving shit on 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago of things that were written by people who didn't understand shit. So, I mean, that's the simple answer to that but i I, we could write a book and then we could yeah we have a book (laughs) sure exactly spider-man does exist what are you trying to say (laughs) i think many people wish aragorn existed for various different reasons right right (laughs) 
Um, so we didn't have anything else to say. Did anybody else have anything else to add? Or shall I hit stop? Okay. All right. Go. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, wife. I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.